So yeah, I realize I'm really late to the party on this movie. But hey, so I'm dropping the video on a Thursday. Throwback Thursday for a retro review. Yeah! But I finally saw The Shack, so let's talk about this movie. Welcome to Durbania, I'm Durbin, and this is my retro review for The Shack. So, I never read the book, and I had never seen the movie, and my sister got it for me for Christmas. She really likes the movie. She desperately, desperately, I mean, like, like seriously, she called me every day. I'm not kidding you. She called me every day. She's like, you need to watch the movie. I was like, fine. So I finally popped in the movie. I watched it, and here we are with my thoughts of this movie. So... I mean, overall, I thought it was a good movie. Now, what's interesting is my thoughts with this movie are going to be entwined with a little bit of my background. So here's some of my background if you don't know it. I spent 15 years working in Christian radio. I started when I was 17 in high school. I worked for a Christian rock station. We're talking the hard rock, rah, 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 hard rock. And then I moved up and I worked at a talk station in California. And then I moved to where I am right now. And I worked at a station that was both Christian music and we had a separate station, a talk station. And I bring up the talk station because when The Shack was released, when the book came out, I was working at that radio station and the talk station show host went nuts over this book in the most negative way possible. Everything about it, they just, they bashed it, they bashed its theology, and every day, I mean every day, it would be like, this was the popular trend, so there was a new guest on the show to point out something else that was wrong with the book, that was wrong with the author, that was wrong with the author's theology, now look, I don't know anything about the author's theology. I don't know anything like that. All I do know is, <laughs> I began to understand why there's that saying, all press is good press, because all of those people on that radio station absolutely bashing the movie, or the, the book, it made me even more curious to read the book and see the movie, which I honestly, I still have not gotten around to reading the book, and I only just now saw the movie. So some of my thoughts are going to be along those lines of how they were bashing it and things. And I think one of the things that, you know, they really didn't like about it is how God is portrayed. Because, you know, Jesus, you know, says, our father in heaven, God our father, so God is a father. Octavia Spencer, she plays uh, God in this. And so I think that was the first radical idea that I think just tripped a lot of people out. But, you know, I... I don't know. I read the Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis where Jesus is portrayed as Aslan the lion. So, I mean, I know he's not literally a lion. So it's like, okay, I can get past that and I could look into the message and the heart of what the story is trying to portray. So that's what I tried to do with The Shack. So as I was watching The Shack, first off, from a movie standpoint, I think it was pretty well made. I mean, it is definitely a powerful story. The idea that you have this guy, Mac, and he has a wife, he has three kids, and then his daughter... Uh, his youngest daughter gets kidnapped and murdered. And she's, by youngest daughter, I mean, she's like six or seven. And I can't even imagine that kind of pain. So this movie is really about a parent's absolute worst nightmare. And so this is Mac actually living out his worst nightmare, living in the deepest pain. And so this movie kind of picks up months after this event has happened. And he's disconnecting from his wife because hatred, anger, bitterness, all of that stuff, it's building up in him. It's building a disconnect to him and his wife. And he's always had an anger towards God because he had a very abusive father. And so he always questioned, God, if you're good, then why didn't you save me from my abusive father? And then now that his daughter is kidnapped and killed in this horrifying tragedy, it brings up those questions all over again, but it makes them about 100 times worse. I mean, God, if you're good and you're all powerful, then where were you to save my daughter? So he gets an invitation in his mailbox and it's a snowy day, the mail's not running, it's a huge storm, there's no tracks in the snow, just magically there's this note in his mailbox, and it's uh, saying, hey, come to the shack, I'd like to see you this weekend, signed Papa, and Papa is his wife's nickname for God, you know, just kind of an intimate name that she gives God, you know, signifying they have a deep relationship, and so <clears throat> that's how God is known to his wife and to his kids as Papa, and so he thinks this is a sick joke, but <clears throat> he just decides, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the shack anyway. You know, of course, he takes a gun and all that in case it's like the killer or something. I don't know. So then he goes to the shack, and this is where he encounters the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So he encounters the entire Trinity right there in a house, which is always kind of interesting how they portrayed it. And it was interesting what they did with Octavia Spencer playing God and, and seeing God as a mother instead of seeing God as a father. 
Because the message that I picked up from it is, is, you know, as soon as Mac meets God in this form, God is, and he's like, well, isn't God a father? And God responds, well, with your history with fathers, I kind of just felt like you needed a mother right now. And I don't think that that was meant to be a huge theological thrashing. I really don't. I don't think that was meant to be any theological statement whatsoever. I think it was meant to be a plot device in a story to show God coming to a person on their level and with what they needed at that time and with what they could handle at that time. So I'm not thinking that, you know, putting God Papa as, you know, this mother figure, I don't think that that was any kind of strange, weird theological statement. And then Jesus, you know, he looks like you would picture Jesus. You know, he's got the beard, only his hair short and stood along, but he's got the beard. He's wearing jeans, plaid shirt. He's a carpenter. He's got his tools. And then you have the Holy Spirit, who is this Asian woman. And so it's just interesting. And it's funny because, honestly, my weakest link with this movie was the Holy Spirit. The, the, uh, that's, oh gosh, that sounds so awful. My the weakest link with this movie was the Holy Spirit. No, it was, it was the portrayal of the Holy Spirit. And again, I'm not making any theological statements. I, and I don't think the movie was trying to. If it was and I'm wrong, let me know. But I don't think it was trying to. It was just, I thought Octavia Spencer as God, I thought the guy playing Jesus, I thought they were both really, really strong characters and they brought a lot of strength and weight to their scenes. And it's not that I think the actress portraying the Holy Spirit did a bad job. I feel like for me, the problem with the character of the Holy Spirit lied in the writing because I just felt like she wasn't written as strong as the other two. So, you know, you have Mac learning lessons from all three and he learned some really good lessons from the Holy Spirit, I just felt like the writing for the other two was stronger than the writing for the Holy Spirit. So really, he gets confronted with all these questions, and this is where it does get a little deep in theology. And one of the things that I thought was really cool and really interesting about this movie, when they got into the theological aspects, is, you know, he's really mad at God. So he's just sitting across from God at the table, and he's like, if you are all good, and if you are all powerful, then how come my daughter's dead? How come my dad abused me? How come so much evil is in this world, but you're supposedly, you are what you are? And God responds, hey, look, I don't want slaves. I want children. I want people that love me freely. For that to happen, there's gotta be free will. And where there's free will, there is a door for evil to come in. I am not the author of that evil. I don't create that evil. I don't orchestrate the evil. But when evil comes and evil happens because of free will on the world, I can be in the midst of it and orchestrate good things out of it. And I like that because when I look at God and I go through the Bible personally as a Christian myself, I don't see God as somebody that creates evil to teach us lessons, that smites somebody with cancer because they needed to learn a lesson or their neighbor needed to learn a lesson. Like, that's not how I see God. And when I read scripture, I don't see that in there. But what I see in scripture is that we live in a fallen world. And in a fallen world, we're going to have trouble. But God is good. One day, everything's going to be set right. And until that day, here we live in this wicked world, but God can take even the worst things and turn it around for good. That doesn't mean he's the author of it or the cause of it. It means we live in that fallen world and he could turn those things around expertly. So for me personally, that's something that I believe. And so that being talked about in the movie and that approach, I was fine with it. So, I mean, and then the other thing is Sam Worthington, I think he's a really good actor. And, you know, I thought he was good in Avatar and in some of the other movies I've seen him in. But, you know, I really haven't seen him a lot where he really gets to use his acting chops. This movie, he he had to use his acting chops. This movie is very story driven. It's very emotional driven. And so it... And it's, it's apparent walking out their absolute worst nightmare. And so the way that Sam Worthington reacts to things concerning his daughter, I feel like those actions are just so real and so genuine that it, it did bring a lump to my throat because he just did a fantastic job portraying the sadness over his daughter, his anger at God, and then, you know, the Trinity is walking him through what is God really like, what are we really like, and now that you got it down what we're really like, now let's really get into what's going on with you 
anger and bitterness have not only separated you from me, but your anger and bitterness is separating you from your family, and you're even blind to the hardships they're going through in this time, and you can't even help lead them out. And so he has to deal with forgiving his daughter's murderer. I hope I'm not spoiling too much of this, but it, 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 it's just an interesting plot, and I'm, I'm saying it to tell you how Sam Worthington reacts well to that. I mean, when God says you need to forgive the guy that kidnapped and killed your daughter, Sam Worthington gives an amazing reaction to that that is realistic. I think that is realistic to how you or I would be like, what? But it's, I mean, it's just, it's powerful the way he does that. And so I think it's, I think, I think in the end, I'm going to give this movie a B minus. I mean, I, the story is slow. So when you're sitting there watching this movie, it is slow. It, there's nothing about this movie that is action driven. It's it's very emotional driven. It's very story driven. It's very conversational driven. So it's really what this movie is about is watching and listening. It's about watching Sam Worthington, feeling what he's feeling, feeling his anger. And then what is God feeling? How is God responding? What is God's reaction to this? And so like, that was really interesting. And then it's about the conversations that they have. So that's really what this movie's about. And for it being that, I'm going to give it a B minus because I really did. I, I just went with it. I, I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the journey. I enjoyed the question Sam Worthington, his character Mac raised. I enjoyed the emotional journey that he went through. That sounds weird to say I enjoyed it, knowing exactly what this plot is, but you know what I mean in terms of a fictitious film and just following the story and the emotion of it. Yeah, I, I was tracking with it from beginning to end, so B- is my grade. Did you see The Shack? Let's talk about it. Did you like The Shack? If you didn't, what did you not like about it? If you liked it, what did you like about it? Can't wait to have this conversation with you in the comments. While you're there, hit the subscribe button to become a Durbanian. Next to the subscribe button is the bell. Click the bell so you're notified the moment I drop new videos. Like tomorrow, I'm dropping my first ever comic book review and I'm gonna review the graphic novel Superman Earth One Volume One First Steps. I'm really excited to get into that. It's one of my favorite graphic novels, so definitely hit the subscribe button and the bell for that. Also, on Saturday, I'm gonna drop a theological analysis for the movie Justice League War. So I'm very much looking forward to that one as well. So hit the subscribe button, hit the bell. I'm Durbin, thank you for checking out Durbania.